Praise the Lord. Blessings, beloved. Just have a couple of things, maybe more than a couple. Um, a number of things that I'd like to address. Um, currently, there's a case ongoing before the High Court. Um, it's a challenge to the constitutionality of um, the sections under which um, I have a, an eight-month sentence. It's come to my attention that even a person who does uh, commits manslaughter may not necessarily get a prison sentence, but a street preacher gets eight months. So speaking just on pr proportionality, um, it's just it, it seems that there's kind of a, a, a gross um, uh, disproportionality to it. Um, so let's start. In terms of offence. Um, insult. A guard is called many names in the course of his work. There are a couple that I will not repeat that are commonly used, a number of names. Um, and a guard is kind of expected to have what's known as a thick skin. Would be like, you know, if you were overly sensitive, easily offended, Maybe if being a guard wouldn't be the best job for you. Guards are called names of all sorts, but as a result, nobody is arrested on that basis. Nor do they get increased sentences um, whilst in custody because they have freedom of speech. And that does actually include using words that through the course of your day, it wouldn't be advisable or deemed proper to use. Now, whilst this is the case and these words are unnecessary and uncalled for in many cases, um, freedom of speech actually allows for it. And that's why these people aren't brought before the court, as I said, for an increased sentence or sentencing at all, or even a hearing, because there's no grounds. It's come to my knowledge that I am the only person who has been prosecuted under Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act and sentenced. The only person ever in the country. So when you look at that and you see that eight months came as a result of that, it exposes... Um, that vast and great disproportionality to what's going on. It also exposes, to an extent, um, a, a bias, it must, it must do, because of the dispro disproportionate sentencing. If a judge expresses that the reasoning behind his decision or, the, or how he came about his ruling is based on a personal um, world view or a personal opinion and not um, as it should be um, based on the law itself or a lawful definition then what he has done is he's acted so outside of his office in showing partiality when he's supposed to um, hold his office with um, impartiality. So the matter was that the judge didn't personally agree on something even though it is scientifically proven otherwise. So bearing that this is recorded in a DAR, um, a digital audio recording of what went on in the court, being that this is a matter for uh, of public interest. This type of stuff is available. If you're interested in the DAR, just get in contact with me. Um, it's the digital audio recording. You can contact me on my personal message. So the judge did show partiality. It is my opinion and it is evidenced on the DAR, in, in my opinion. 
Now, section uh, 113 is, a f is what affords Gardi to act out of jurisdiction in a civil matter. It, it affords them the opportunity to go and print out a piece of paper and call it an adult behaviour warning. And basically what it is, is a complaint taken from a member of the public, of the public about another member of the public. That's all it is. It's like when two children say, Mammy, she said this about me. And it would be the equivalent of Mammy writing that down and signing it. And saying, right, that's it. You better stop doing that, saying that about her. But I didn't say it. But you better stop. Right, and then that's it. And then Mammy walks off. Right. But there's no evidence that the child actually said that. So Mammy's obviously picking sides there. Oh, come on, you're you're on you're on Sally's side there, and not on Johnny's side. What? Well, that's bias, and you've no proof that Johnny actually said what Sally's saying he said. But you're going to write it down and sign it. Sure, that's conspiracy. So, I mean, this is section one one three of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. I think. Just one second. Don't want to misstate. Excuse me, misstate. Um, public order. One one three. Okay. Okay. Um, Ireland. Okay. think this applies so I may be misinformed on that but just a second um, section a bit more specific of the Act. let's see I can corroborate now Oh yes, this is it. I wasn't misinformed. I just had the wrong um, act. The wrong act came up. So it's, this is to do with um, 113 in this part. Behaviour warning has the meaning assigned to it under section 114. Civil order means an order described in section 115. Senior member of the Gardaí Shikana means a member of the Gardaí Shikana not below the rank of a superintendent. For the purposes of this party, a person behaves in an antisocial manner. Okay. So the assumption on the part of the guard is that the person has acted in an antisocial manner. This is the problem. It foregoes due process and shows partiality. Because the guard has to say, right, you did definitely did this in order to write it down, sign it, and hand it to you as a cease and desist. So how did he come to, to the conclusion that the complaint was actually an occurrence without even going to the court or employing any lawful reasoning or measures, such as the presumption of innocence? He has to, he has to presume I'm innocent. As Sally said, so Johnny's wrong automatically. But sure, this is, this is basically unlawful. Yeah, like children know this stuff like how are how are very well paid solicitors and judges and legisl legislating bodies allowing this stuff passed when it's so simple that children know when this type of injustice is being done but I didn't say that mammy well Sally said you said it but but I didn't so what? So so by what means? But what's the measure of investigation? What would Mammy have to do to establish that Sally did it? 
but she'd have to at least investigate it. So Mummy would have to have some solid irrefutable evidence that this occurred. Wouldn't she, surely? Certainly the guards have to. I say, Sally, are you telling the truth now? Right, she might test her a bit more, Sally. Now, because Johnny can get in trouble now if you do this. Yeah, you sure now he did this? And, like, the thing is, like, Mammy would probably not be in the room at the time. Like, it, it, it wouldn't be something happening out in, in the public where there'd be, like, an expectation that what the person was doing was lawful. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm using a simple analogy. It can't be used all the way through. But just on the basis of assuming that what somebody said is true just because they said it is absolutely ridiculous. Unless it is the word of God. Because men lie. People lie. That's why we have certain measures in law to investigate. If people didn't lie, there'd be no need for investigation. Okay. So this person did something wrong. Right, so this person did something wrong, whatever it is, this person did. Okay, what is it? Member of the public? Right guard, she said, Doo -doo. Okay, adult behaviour warning. Signed, Garda, not paid enough. Right? Garda, not paid enough? Okay. Gainful employment? So here we have. A mess. Here we have a adult behavior warning. Take the complaint, sign it. You better stop doing this, mister. Do you hear me? You better, it's like a comedy sketch, except it's serious and very wrong. You better stop doing this, do you hear me? Here's your first one. But I did, like, what am I doing wrong? I didn't do anything wrong yet. You haven't proven that, you can't. Just, you can't tell me to stop doing this. I'm per it's what I'm doing is perfectly legal. If, if what I'm doing is wrong, why aren't you arresting me? Now we're not saying you're doing anything wrong by preaching, but then why, why, like what's this about? What's this adult behavior warning? Because antisocial, well, what's the definition of antisocial behavior? Can we discuss it? For the purpose of this part, a person behaves in an antisocial manner if the person causes or in the circumstances is likely to cause to one or more person who are not of the same household as that person harassment, significant or persistent alarm, distress, fear or intimidation or significant or persistent impairment of their use or enjoyment of their property. So we have to apply reasonability not just in A but also in B and C and then also in three, we can't just abandon reason whenever it suits somebody. Because they'd rather you not be there saying what you're saying. So because um, the Bullring or any other town centre is the centre of activity, it's where people frequent. So being that a preacher or somebody who wants to share their belief system or assemble usually would like to do so uh, in a public space where there are people it is reasonable to expect that somebody would preach where people frequent and not kind of talking to themselves down a side alley somewhere okay so that means there are going to be premises there okay so somebody who's going to take up a premises in a public place should reasonably expect that there's going to be activity in that public space that they may not agree to or with.
that there may be worldviews that are expressed in that place that they may not agree with. And that may even uh, offend them, their, their belief system in that um, it's contrary to it. So if you're going to say, oh no, you can't express what you're expressing because uh, it, it's the opposite to what I want to express, then where is then you're only affording rights to yourself. Is, is that in line with the Constitution? Is that not hypocrisy? Where's the inclusiveness? Where's the diversity? You see, God Almighty has given us a dispensation of grace where we can have a Christian worldview or not. That's how it's able to occur. That's the only reason it's able to occur, that you can have a, a, a viewpoint that's different to mine, because of the dispensation of grace. That's my worldview. You may not hold that worldview. I'm not going to try to remove your ability to have your worldview simply because I don't agree with it. But I do have the right to express my worldview and even to attempt to influence yours. Because you have the right to change your worldview. Okay? Isn't that beautiful? And that's truly what's meant by freedom of expression. To have a conscience, hold opinions and, and beliefs and share them. Not only that, but listen to other peoples. And that's what's meant by freedom of speech. That's what's meant by free will. Now, all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. And that's a different conversation. But for the purposes of uh, dealing with Section 113 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. We'll get to that. Now, often they'll say, well, you have a right, but it's not an absolute right. And of course, they like it's how far can they extend this? Just because your right isn't absolute, uh, we can determine just how much of that right you have. No, that's not really how it works, because law has to be clearly defined. And that's why uh, law is clearly defined, usually. Except in this Criminal Justice Public Order Act, which they're trying to bring any, everything in under to usurp authority over the Irish Constitution when it was put in place in the, in the beginning against drunks. It was brought in under the Intoxicating Liquor Act. It's there to give, initially, to give Gardy a little bit more. Uh, Ability to deal with drunks to kind of usher them a little bit more on the road along the road there I don't know might have been people coming out Large amounts of people coming out of his football stadium or something like that going through where people are living Maybe they'd be going into their garden or something and it would give Gardy a little bit more ability to say lads come on now move on Or a fella out with his missus and lads are drunk and kind of getting too close to her and making them feel uncomfortable and stuff like that, you could call the guards and the guards say, lads, come on, that's enough now. Move on. Leave these people alone. You are drunk. Now head off or you're going to the drunk tank. That kind of stuff. But what they're after doing with it, clearly. I mean, eight months when a person who commits manslaughter can get away. I mean, it's just topsy-turvy land. So, um, you see, people say, well, you have to prove that something has been prejudiced to your rights. Well, not applying the law is an automatic removal of rights. It's automatically prejudice, not only to me, but to everybody in the country. 
and every uh, and the next generation and the previous generation it is a prejudice against Ireland not just one man that's the fallacy not applying the law is an automatic removal of rights this is harm or prejudice they say oh well look sure the guard can throw as many adult behavior warnings at you as he wants they're not to cease and desist they didn't stop you from doing what you were doing so it's that's not really the issue well hold on a minute they say it doesn't appear on pulse record it doesn't go on your record so so it isn't a cease and desist or how it or nor does it have the power of a, of a civil order well then why are you giving it to me then you're littering and why would you be surprised if i put it in the bin what is it and if it's not a cease and desist why would it bring you into the civil court like a guard can't just go right johnny that's it i'm bringing you to civil court unless he's out of uniform and you've done something on him then he can make an application to bring you to civil court as a citizen but not as a guard that's not his jurisdiction folks so in case you didn't know guardy cannot operate in civil matters they operate in criminal matters they have no jurisdiction in civil court that's for citizens one citizen can take another citizen to civil court Even the idea that a guard would represent somebody in civil court is a complete undermining of law. Like the very basics of law. Like the fundaments of law. Like the divisions of law. The sections of law. Like it's such, it's so unlawful that it's just an offence against the entire law. Do you, do you not see what I'm saying? They don't want to have a conversation about Section 115 because they say it's so insignificant. I say it's probably the most significant matter at hand. Because it enables a guard to bring somebody into civil court and represent another person against them. They say, well, sure, well, it's just civil court. It's only a civil order. Did you not know that if you don't keep a civil order that you are a criminal? So it doesn't matter how you arrive at criminalizing somebody if you have to leave your jurisdiction to do so you're criminalizing them and unlawfully how did you how did you come about that well you had to you had to break the law to come about it therefore it doesn't stand if you have to break the law if you have to leave your jurisdiction in order to prosecute something you've already broken the law so what who can afford you the power to break the law Who's this legislator? What's his name or her name? What's it, who's, who's given them the ability to, to dispense with these legislations that are undermining law? What's going on? Not applying the law is an automatic removal of rights. Did you not know that? Automatically, it's prejudiced. Well, what harm did it do you? That's not the point. It's automatically prejudiced. That's doing harm. Not applying the laws and automatic removal of rights. This is harm to the Constitution. This is harm to the state. A judge must hold his office. Or he is harming his fellow man. directly oh it doesn't appear on post records don't worry about it hold on a second what is it then <laughs> the guard could give me pink pieces of paper all day long why was he giving me pink pieces of paper for that how that purport which means falsely state or profess falsely state that i'm doing something wrong and that he has the ability to tell me to stop doing it what could I be doing wrong that the guard can't arrest me for? That's the real question. If I'm doing something wrong, arrest me. Don't be throwing paper at me. That's a waste of paper. 
chuck me in the car. So who's the one doing the harassing then? Significantly and persistently. All right, first one didn't work. Like, right, what's your name? This is the second one. What, second one what? What do you mean? Were you talking to the guy the other day that gave me the first one? Is that not conspiracy? These are unrelated matters. Adult behaviour number one. Well, how did you know that I, I was on adult behaviour number two? Who were you talking to? Was it on my file? I thought these were only confettis and they're not on my pulse record. Who was recording them then if they're not on my pulse record? And how can you get number two? And how does number two relate to number one if a different person is making the complaint? What's going on? Number one, how to behave on it. Put down the complaint, sign it. Right, Garda diddly do, with all respect, Garda diddly dee on the second form and a different complainant. What were the complainants talking with each other? So these are, if, they're, if they weren't talking to each other, it's not conspiratorial. If they were, then it is. If they weren't talking to each other, then why is this adult behaviour warning number two when the, both matters are unrelated? If the guards weren't recording it on Pulse record, how did they know it was adult behaviour number two? And if, they're, if they did know it was adult behaviour warning number two, that's because they conspired. So either the public are conspiring or the guards are conspiring, or both. In which case, how do two non-cease and desists amount to two if they're unrelated matters on separate days and need to be treated without bias with the presumption of innocence and impartiality and how do you get to number three what, what and why is three the magic number that brings you before the civil court any more than three now and that's really pushing the boat out what the three unrelated issues on three separate occasions by three different people. Oh no, well now in fairness you had five. Well why does it matter? I could have 25. Three allow you to bring me before the civil court according to section 113. So why would any of that stuff matter? He's being serious, lads. This is, I mean this is really bad stuff. This is really dirty drawers now. And it needs to be addressed and cleaned up quick. If an adult behaviour warning is based on a complaint that by nature is not identical to another complaint issued on another adult behaviour warning for another separate and differently worded matter on a different day occasion then why does it amount to two adult behavior weeks and by what mechanism are they added together if they're not on your pulse record they're accumulating how how is that possible without being biased and conspiratorial even in the absence of due process they're putting these things together oh yeah but that's definitely antisocial behavior so is this all right they're both antisocial put them together well, how did you arrive at them being antisocial judge jury executioner by what measure and standard according to what lawful definition you're making it up as you go along now and it doesn't even make sense you're abandoning logic and reason and the fundamentals of law folks where do you think that's headed now if 
three, four, five different adult behavior warnings. Complaints come in. We are saying, oh, come on. What, what can we do about this lad? There's nothing we can do about him. That's because he's not breaking the law. Why would you therefore be searching to do something? Like, right, right, lads, open it all up. What have we got? What can we do? They keep calling the station. Tell them to stop calling the station. Wasting police time. It didn't, like what a man has been doing for three years didn't suddenly become unlawful. They might say, well, that's the consistent, persistent part of it, is that, that uh, no. It has to be unlawful to begin with. If it's not unlawful to begin with, how devoutly a person does it is irrelevant. Your man's out there every day doing his Irish dancing. If he keeps doing it, we're going to arrest him. He can do it Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, but if he does it Thursday, that's it. That's it. We're going to totally misapply the law. We have to be seen to be able to do something here. Is that what it is? Because that's what's happening. Is that what's behind it? Moving on. So that's that aspect of section 113 and that's that unlawful nature of it exposed to that extent. Let's continue to do so. It says, oh, by the way, section 113 brings about section 115 unlawfully. Somebody might say, well, it's been through the court, so functus officio. It's not really the case, though, is it? I mean, just because something came to pass doesn't automatically make it lawful. That's why we have these means to actually revisit something. Okay? Because men's structures are flawed. Man has a, a finite aptitude. We do. And, and men are corrupt. And that's why when our forefathers were putting together the Constitution, they tried as best that they could to piece it together in such a way that would, uh, would try to mitigate as much as possible, as much as is reasonably possible and policeable, the amount of corruption that can manifest. So they tried to keep it, at least they should, applying reason. They try to keep it as tight as possible. Run a tight ship. Right. To avoid this type of discriminatory uh, biased. It's like saying biased, biased. But yeah, a discriminatory bias in uh, um, showing prejudice, harm to an individual. So at what stage kind of lost my train of thought there a little bit I apologize for that not applying the law is an automatic removal of rights this is harm or prejudice oh yes they they say it doesn't appear in the pulse record yet they're able to piece these things together and say you have three or four or five of them but where did they go they were recorded somewhere in order to know you're on number three or four or five Now, if something doesn't have a cease and desist power, why would you expect somebody to stop doing what they're doing as a result of it? That's another kind of an obvious question. 
here this doesn't have the piece the power of a cease and desist but but stop will you here we haven't gone through due process but here take this piece of paper and hopefully this makes you stop will you stop will you now this is number two now we're not recording this but here's number three will you stop cease and desist maybe it's not a cease and desist but cease and desist So why would they expect that I wouldn't throw it in the bin? Why would they expect that I wouldn't come to the guard station and say, look, I, I would like to dissuade you from taking this course of action because you're acting out of your office. You're acting out of jurisdiction here in, tr in telling me that you're bringing me to the civil court to prosecute uh, me on behalf of a member or members of, a pu of the public. It doesn't matter how many there are. The point is that you're favoring them even though their complaints were totally unrelated and happened on different days. You can't show reasonable suspicion. So here, here what's happening is a conspiracy, a conspiracy and it's being allowed to, to accumulate and come before the court. It's not only a conspiracy on the side of the public but also on the police. On the side of the police. Because they're piecing these two separate incidents together as one accumulative uh, matter and then acting out of jurisdiction I mean lads it doesn't make any sense it's a total misuse of the of the law it's total misuse of the uh, function of the court it's a total misuse and denial of our rights as would be reasonably ex expected and accepted so what well, who would I be if I didn't follow the correct channels and do this exposition. What use would I be to my fellow man in that in that um, aptitude in that in that position as a citizen in that office? Do you know that citizens have the power of arrest? That if they see somebody breaking the law, even if they're in a uniform, that they have the power to arrest them. How do you tell me? How do you do that if the courts are in agreement with them? How do you how do you make a citizen's arrest and bring somebody before the court if the court are in agreement with them doing it? Is that seditious talk? No, <laughs> it's a question. You'd expect that they can't accumulate and add up if they're separate matters that must be dealt with separately and in order for due process to be observed and adhered to um, otherwise an agenda or a nefarious motive of harm is exposed so they're saying let's do this let's add these all up and then we'll bring this guy before the court that's showing a, an agenda a nefarious one a nefarious motive of harm because you're bringing them before the court so to stop them doing what they've otherwise been lawfully doing that you're incapable of arresting them for. So why would you think, why would you expect that a civil court can do what the law can't? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's it's a dis it's a disregard for presumption of innocence and due process. I've said this a number of times. It's a cons it's a conspiratorial footing exposed, being that different members forego impart impartiality and due process by compiling the matters, and then acting out of jurisdiction in favour of somebody who hasn't brought substantial, irrefutable, solid evidence, but only uh, prima facie hearsay and. Uh, statements that's all that has been presented to date it shows further bias doesn't it by ignoring your lawful entitlement to due process prior to a cease and desist order stop doing that why is am i breaking the law no you're not breaking the law but stop doing it here why 
God, you have to keep. You have to let me keep doing this, because I'm not breaking the law. If I'm not breaking the law, then you can, like this could go. This could turn into harassment if you keep telling me I can't do what's lawful. Right, that's it. We're bringing down adult behaviour warnings. So you're telling me in advance you're going to start giving me adult behaviour warnings, plural. Now, by this stuff, I don't want anybody to get into trouble. I just think that this stuff should be removed and not revisited. I'm not, I'm not mentioning names. I'm not going for anybody personally. I'm just saying, lose it. It is totally unconstitutional. I hope the court does the right thing. You know, being like they're saying, well, what? So the law is basically the law is there to prevent one man doing a harm to another man. That's what the law is there for, lads. Harm, like actual harm, actual measurable harm. Not stuff that's based on opinion. That's not that's not deemed harm. It's not. Like if somebody says da 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 da, -da and you go oh da 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 da, Ooh, don't agree with that. That's not what they said is not considered harm by law. You see what I'm saying to you? By the laws of the land, that's not considered harm. You say, oh, don't do that. Guard, he said. Da, 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 da. All right, that's it. Ah, come on. Should the guards hear worse in the, in their in the course of their day? than anything a preacher can say um, contained in the Holy Scriptures or his opinions of abortion or paedophilia or um, pretty much things that have been historically deemed to be immoral behaviours. It's not like something that's new. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. But the fact that a person may not agree with me doesn't mean that I have to stop saying it. it doesn't mean that I have to stop preaching. And that's the thing. Now, if the only thing you can do is say, ah, oh, but three years. Come on, three years. I'm trying to earn a living here. What? Keep earning a living then. Do you think that a preacher's gonna stop women wanting to uh, uh, buy dresses? I don't think a preacher's going to stop women going into a shop to buy a dress. Section 113. Being summoned without reason is incurring harm. It is incurring harm because it takes up your time. It is incurring harm because it is a removal of liberty. I wanted to go and play golf that, at that time. I wanted to go and be with my daughter at that time. I wanted to go and say a prayer at that time. I wanted to go and get a haircut. I wanted to go down and have a walk on the quay. I wanted to go on my scooter. I wanted to do some exercise. I wanted to go to sleep. And you're telling me, I wanted to go and do a lot of things there, but you're telling me that I have to go here. Right? You're telling me I have to go to the court. You're summonsed. That's incurring harm. Being summonsed without reason is incurring harm. Already. So that's why if there's no reason for me to be summonsed, I'm not going. Because it shows. It's like... If you, you're, you have to be an example to the next generation, not 
after the fact say oh well what they did to me was wrong but I went why because you were a coward it's because you're a coward you went to the court even though you knew they were doing wrong no <laughs> that's not going to happen but at the same time I'm easily imposed upon I'm not a violent person so do you see how they're not the same thing not being a coward doesn't mean automatically that you're violent but meekness doesn't equate to weakness either do you see how that works being strong it doesn't equate to beating somebody up who you know you can overpower leading is to serve and the best way I can serve in this instance is to not show up to court for silly summonses that haven't been established by reason by reasonable um, what's it called one second the computer should laugh by reasonable suspicion etc by a, a crime actually haven't been committed not talking about a regular you broke a regulation you didn't do this and many times I've walked by Wexford bus now and the, the guy will see me and fix his mask I mean come on lads I'm going to call it as I see it I'm not afraid like I'm not going to hide behind the facade so a guard can't bring you to court in a civil jurisdiction he can't be doing that kind of stuff it's not his jurisdiction simple as that when somebody says I'm not sure I agree with you and it's their job to know they need to go away and think and then when they're prepared to have the meeting with you you know what I mean um, section 113 and, and one, this is the thing section 113 and 115 bring each other into existence which creates a false premise neither of which existing on their own do you see what I'm saying and it's like it's not this it's that no it's not it's him it's like two twins and you don't know which is which and they're blaming each other for what happened he did it no he did it oh, come on who did it section 115 and section 113 bring each other into existence and so not addressing one is not fully addressing the other and this is the this is the crack they're at now it's clever isn't it And a reluctance to get into reasonable excuse and why why are you reluctant to get into reasonable excuse you know judge o'shea which is the judge who has sentenced me to eight months in prison eight months of my life behind bars for preaching the gospel holding a sign and singing hymns with the name Jesus in it um, previously said that when a guard arrested me and said I was was and asked me were you saying things about homosexuals that was it that was the question that was all he asked me and I said what do you mean exactly right that's it and then he gave me a section uh, 8 to leave the area and I said well hold on a minute what do you mean you've asked me a question I've asked you a question to fully establish exactly what your question means and now you're telling me I have to leave the area why did you ask me the question then and now you're telling me I have to leave the area section 8 get out of the get out of here get out of here sure that's harm you're telling me I can't be where other people are 
that's harm right there. You've already incurred harm when you tell me to leave the area. I'm not drunk. Do you not see that? When you tell somebody get out of here, you're, you've, they've already incurred harm. That's already prejudice. And if you haven't established that Section 7 is and has been shown, proven to be the case, when you're only arriving on the scene and saying, we've had a complaint and did you say this? Well, hold on a second, you're asking me, did I say it? And you're already telling me to leave the area. Will you let me answer? And then I say, well, I'm not going to leave the area and you put me in cuffs. And then I go before Judge O'Shea and he says, well, this man had reasonable excuse. I believe he did actually have reasonable excuse not to leave. And then the same man, a little while later, is sentencing me to eight months in prison for doing the same thing. That's a bit of an escalation. I don't know. So section 113, section 115 and section 7 need to be removed from the constitution to hold and keep the integrity of it. Otherwise, what you have is something that can be manipulated and misused to target certain worldviews that the general narrative doesn't approve of. If you maintain section 113, 115 and 7 after I've I shown it to you and I'm unpacking it to you and showing you how, it basic, how it's basically unlawful. What more can what more can a man do? Now, even when they ask me to do silly things, like stop doing this and stop doing that, I'm not a silly man. So I know I can be more productive when I'm not in prison than I can be when I'm in prison. If I was in prison now, I wouldn't be making this video. So I'm because the Bible tells me to make the most of my time because the days are evil. I'm here doing what I'm told by a court that is acting unlawfully. I've appealed to the High Court to try and get these the constitutionality of these tested but for some reason section 113 didn't find its way into the uh, paperwork 113 that one I just unpacked for you there and showed you how terribly unlawful it is didn't find its way into the constitutional challenges Maybe it's another challenge for another day. But it certainly relates to section 115. I won't get into that now because my three pound brain <laughs> won't allow me. But yeah, there's there's a lot in it. I mean, it's it, it fundamentally, and I, I repeat this, time and time again, fundamentally denies the basic mechanisms of law. It attempts to circumvent them, attempts to work around them. And it's not, uh, it's not acceptable by any measure. Can you imagine somebody, can you imagine your two children are in school, right? And the teacher says, Oh, Mary said this to Anne, and Anne wasn't happy about it. So she told her mammy, and then her mammy put it down on a piece of paper and gave it to your child, and said, if you keep doing this, you have to leave this school. Well, hold on a second. The, the child of the, the parent of the child who received the letter from the mammy of the child who said she said something, will be saying, well, how do you know they actually, this actually happened? 
And how do you know my child said any of this? I certainly can't concur it because I wasn't there. So how does the judge concur it? How does he concur it? How does he ratify it as being true? All he's got is hearsay. All he's got is prima facie evidence. How can he establish whether somebody's distressed or not? Is it if they put on a face like this? I'm distressed. How does he actually come to the conclusion according to law and not using vagueness and subjective uh, opinion um, based upon a, a specific worldview because it is a belief system if you believe something being said is cause for to is cause for distress then that's based upon a worldview and so it's actually irrational behavior and shouldn't be encouraged if somebody's worldview is distressing to you to the extent where it will interfere with how you can work or whether you can look at that person or not, you're actually discriminating against them on the basis of their worldview. It was said in court about me that my appearance caused distress. Is that not discriminatory? My appearance, like, I come around the corner, I see him and I actually feel ill. And that was admitted to the court so this is the kind of stuff that's I mean that's not that's, that shouldn't be encouraged in society but at the same time they say you can't have this opinion about somebody who's living this type of uh, living this way or that but we can tell you that you're the very sight of you makes us sick And that's not that it's not even called into question by the judge. Just allowed to talk. Yeah, continue there. Yeah, go on ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, keep saying whatever you want there about this man. Homophobic and racist. All right. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. I had to ask when it came to my time to speak. I had to say. You said I was racist there, right? Because I understand there's like an irrational, there's an irrationality behind the word homophobic. I understand that the term doesn't make sense. Because a phobia is a fear. So somebody being homophobic means that they're being fearful of the same or man. Because homo means same or man, depending on whether you're uh, looking at Greek or Latin. So phobia is an irrational fear. So I don't have an irrational fear of men or same or people who are engaging in homosexual behavior. I don't have fear of people or of men. That wouldn't be Christian of me. Fear not man, the Bible says in so many words. Fear not men. Okay, so I'm not going to be fearful of man then. So Christians are automatically excluded from being homophobic. Phobia is an irrational fear, like arachnophobia is an irrational fear of spiders. Why is it irrational? Because spiders can't hurt you. The majority of them that you'll find in your house anyway that's why it's irrational it's a, like they're creepy crawlies Ooh, it's irrational rectophobia you jump up on a chair or something that's an irrational fear and that's what they're saying about me they're saying that the appearance of me makes them sick I come around the corner I see him there I'm sick and, and and then at the same time they say he's a, he's a fine man so am I a fine man or am I a public nuisance how can you be both at the same time how can you be very intelligent and spouting things that are antisocial so th there was just there was a bit of a conflict of what was being said in what was being said So, this is all in the dark. 
The reason I'm getting into such detail on this is not because I hold any grudges against anybody. I totally, I totally don't. I totally forgive anything anybody said about me that's defamatory, anything like that. I'm not going after anybody. I'm not taking up any cases for libel against the newspaper or slander or defamation, anything of that sort. I love you and I want what is best for you. But the behavior that went on in the court when I was called racist, I have a daughter. And she's probably in a school with people of different ethnicities. And I most certainly would not raise her to be racist in any way. Myself and my daughter were at the playground and there was a little uh, child there. And I ensured that my daughter would take care of him because he was younger than, than her and his family were over the other side of the park. And I picked him up and I helped him down the slide. And to me, it didn't matter what color his skin was. <laughs> it didn't really bother me about any lockdown or anything like that. I just picked him up because he wanted to go on the swing. And I don't care about any of that stuff. And the children were playing together because they were at the park and they weren't wearing any masks. And I saw that child a little while after in a buggy, I think it was him with his mammy, and he was grand. And my little girl is not, is not sick, praise God. So what's the matter then? Who's the racist? Because the only evidence was, that was given was that I have an opinion that is, um, that it, basically that I said something about Islam but Islam is not a race it's a world view so why would anybody be called racist for having a difference of opinion about a world view or about a faith based system and why would that be encouraged by a court in Ireland that kind of derision, that kind of divisive behaviour. And so when it came my time to ask questions, I asked the judge specifically, such and such a person said such and such about uh, me being racist. I said, because that can be considered a defamatory statement, a slanderous statement, or could harm my, my, my good name, so to speak, because none are good but God alone. And my good name as it pertains to law, to use the wording. If it would affect my good name, can we at least, you know, ask, is there anything uh, that, that, any proof or any evidence that can be added to that accusation? And so the judge said, well, is there, did anything spring to mind about, uh, you know, what what race it was, or anything spring to mind about what caused you to believe that he was uh, racist in any way? Uh, nothing comes to mind at the moment. So, nothing came to mind. But later on, was given an evidence to back up um, what the what one person said. I won't even give the gender of the person. I don't think I have already, um, about um, the racist comment. Another person then came in and said, um, and actually that's brought me to the conclusion that I shouldn't distribute the DAR on the basis that people's names will be shared around as well. So I, I will refrain from uh, circulating the DAR on that basis. And I haven't yet, just with one other person who has been kept abreast of the, the case ongoing, on an ongoing basis. But it should be made publicly available. 
and I most certainly will uh, be making it public, publicly available going forward as it unfolds. I'd much rather it didn't happen. But another person gave evidence um, and tried to uh, back up what one lady said um, and said, oh, uh, Miss Tan was talking about masks and how it looked like uh, Islam. And you see, obviously I'm not deterred from, from talking about these types of things because I'm absolutely no harm to anybody since I've actually had a conversation with a, a Muslim man down the quay. Yeah. We were chatting about different worldviews. And that's a beautiful freedom we have in Ireland, that we can coexist here and have differences of opinion and have different worldviews and different faiths and still live amongst one another peacefully. Insofar as we're not trying to threaten each other with violence and we're not trying to do this and we're not trying to do that. We can even work together in the same place and mind each other's children and children go to school together and all that kind of stuff can happen. Because of the, of the nature of the constitution we have. Praise God. So... Because I don't agree with the Islamic faith doesn't mean that I have anything against Muslims. Absolutely not. We're just, we're both men. I love them. They're fellow men. And I would take care of, if I saw um, the child of a Muslim man in any danger I would take care of them as though they were my own child and we should that's exactly how we should behave towards one another in love act in love at all times and this is exactly the message of Jesus Christ love one another love one another Loving one another doesn't necessarily mean that I have to have the same world view as you. But I certainly do have to obey Jesus. Because he's the boss. And he knows best. And he tells me, tell the others about me. Tell the others about me, insofar as it depends on you. What I whisper in your ear, shouted from the rooftops, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I'd, I'd want nothing more than to be heading off to a town now with my little amplifier there behind me on the wall and sticking my headset on and preaching the gospel. But because of the current hindrance that's in, that's in operation, I'm trying to make the most of the time in whatever way is available to me, given the hindrance. And I will continue to. I don't care about a threat of violence against my person. That doesn't deter me. I'm not afraid. I'm not a coward. I'm not going to just acquiesce. Oh, you're summoned to court for not wearing a mask. What big whoop de do I'm not going. Because it's not lawful. I didn't I didn't break the law. You can't be going around telling people you have to wear a mask. What about bodily autonomy and consent and their right to hold a belief and not be discriminated against on that basis? Because discrimination is an action. It's a denial of something. And that's where the harm is incurred. It's when I don't agree with your worldview, so I'm going to deny you this. I don't agree with your worldview, so I'm going to harm your life in this way. That's a discrimination. And you see, this is the thing about mankind, is that again, we have a limited aptitude. And the only reason we're able to live in this way is because of the dispensation of grace of God. 
And you see, God Almighty has never said, you have to do this. He has said, if you don't do this, this is what happens as a result. And he has showed you it. But even in showing you it, he has reduced its effects. Because if God wasn't in the mix, holding things back, they'd be a lot worse. Like way worse, unmanageable. So he's saying, do you see what happens? Look, Satan said, thou shalt not surely die. Well, ask the morgue, are there people dying? Satan said, thou shalt not surely die, Eve. Well, where's your great great granddad? And I say that with the utmost of love. He is a liar and a murderer and a thief and a deceiver. And God hasn't said, he hasn't said, you have to choose me. He said, if you don't choose me, that's the only other option. And he's given you a look into that. See? See? Death. I told you. Thou shalt surely die. So where, where's the guy that said, uh, thou shalt not surely die? You'd be asking for your money back, wouldn't you? Only emptying out all the banks couldn't repay you for what he took from you. But Jesus can give you life. Despite all of this, he has actually gone and paid the price for you and said, I will pay it. Now come follow me. Come trust in me. Because the other fellow has shown himself to be a liar. Come follow me. He's shown himself to be a liar. he boasts in it but Jesus said follow me come follow me put your faith in me and come follow me and I will set you free I will give you everlasting life now if you do that then you pass from death to life and you will inherit everlasting life the Bible says come um, let, the, let any man who wants come and drink from the well of eternal life that is Jesus. That is faith in Jesus. Amen. So I say to you this day. That I have never shown a contempt for the law, for the court. I have in so far as it depends on me. I have been peace, peaceable and compliant, easily imposed upon and at the same time, I haven't operated in cowardice. And I will continue to do the same. Because I love you. It's really that simple. Look, it says here, look. Criminal Justice Public Order Act 1994, Part 2, Offences Relating to Public Order. Section 4. <laughs> it shall be an offence for any person to be present in any public place while intoxicated. That just shows you the spirit under which Criminal Justice Public Order Act exists. And then it shows you in Section 5, it shall be an offence for any person in a public place to engage in offensive conduct. Now look, between the hours of 12 and 7 a.m., like drinking time so there you have section four five drinking 
in this section offensive uh, conduct means any unreasonable behavior Un see unreasonable see the way law is, is governed by reason so the, the word reason you'll find it throughout law reasonable excuse re unreasonable reasonably in this section offensive conduct ma means any unreasonable behavior which having regard to all the circumstances is likely to cause serious offense oh, serious offense See, this is the thing. Offence and serious offence? What's the difference? Is it you shouted a bit louder and hurt my ear? Would that be seriously offensive? Now we're headed into nonsense land. Do you see it? That's seriously offensive to me. Okay, that's seriously offensive. Because that's the way somebody might react or behave in that circumstances. That's the posture somebody might take. I've seen it. I've experienced it. That's offensive to me. Or serious annoyance. So here we have two spirits that a Christian shouldn't operate in. Annoyance and offence. So what is it doing? It's actually giving power to the spirits that are not in keeping with peace. It's giving them remit in the very law. Saying somebody who's given to annoyance and being easily offended now gets to dictate how a person is treated. Do you see how that works? So here you have the spirit of annoyance, the spirit of offence. They're not peaceful spirits. So it is that the person who's given to those spirits who is the one who is breaching the peace yeah it is because they're the one bringing those spirits into the mix they're contracting with that spirit oh no you caused me to now they're really now they're uh, giving away responsibility for their own behavior and how they react to things you wouldn't allow your child to do that. You'd say, "No, Mary, you can't. You can't behave like that. Now you have to. You have to behave yourself in public. Now you can't be just shouting at the children when you don't agree with what they say. You have to like calm down, control yourself, control your behavior, control yourself. That can only annoy you now if you let it." So here there's, so what should happen? Now they're allowing spiritually immature people to run riot. I found that offensive, I found that annoying. We can't allow those spirits to have any dictatorship or any purchase. Otherwise, we're not actually upholding the peace. We'd be upholding annoyance and offence. Then, then, then it's no longer the guardians of the peace, but the guardians of the offence and the annoyance. That makes sense to you? I should do so now hold on a second isn't it the person who's causing the annoyance no you can't cause annoyance this is the misunderstanding it's the person allowing themselves to be annoyed who's contracting with annoyance they're the ones who are allowing the annoyance into their heart into their life an annoyance is a spirit 
that is not of the Holy Spirit because it's a spirit that breaches peace. And so it is the spirit that is a breach of the peace. Well, hold on a second. Let's be reasonable here. If, some, if I'm walking down the road and somebody rugby tackles me, do I not have the right to get annoyed with them? Well, that would be righteous indignation. Right, so there has to be a measure then. Okay, well, let's outline the measure. Let's define the measure. Because it hasn't been. And there's the insidiousness. The insidiousness is the vagueness. It gives opportunity for those who would be given to annoyance and who would be given to, um, what's the other thing, offence, which is a spirit. I'm offended by that. It's a, it, 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 there's no peace in those spirits. They disrupt your peace. And that is, that's slavery. That's spiritual bondage. That's true imprisonment. The person who is given to those spirits is the one who's in spiritual jail. Oh, he, she has a quick temper, he has a quick temper. Should we let them dictate the running of society then? Those loose cannons? That's what they used to be referred to. I'm not trying to attach a stigma here. I'm trying to show historically how things would have been um, categorized and dealt with by people who would be operating reasonably. Do you see that? Because the enemy likes to create stigma. What I'm saying is I'm calling it out for what it is. It's not about being a loose cannon. It's about what are you contracting with? Are you operating in peace? You'll know a tree by its fruits. If the, if the tree is peaceful, then the behavior is peaceful and the person is content. Right? But if the tree is lacking peace, then they're given to annoyance, they're given to offense, they're given to every other form of discontentment or spirit that manifests discontentment. So what would the enemy love to do? Only encourage those spirits that disrupt the peace, but purport, falsely uh, display, that avoiding such spirits is the reduction or the elimination of a freedom. So you take away the freedom, then we're not annoyed, and this and that and the other thing. So that's a spiritual land grab. It's the spirit pushing the right away. Do you see that? Annoyance is saying, no, we don't want that. You're not allowed that right. It's annoying. It's offensive. And they're pushing it away. Hold on a second. I'm peaceful. I just want to say this to you. And then I'll go home. And you go home. Um, there'd be peace. You don't have to stay here if you don't want to. You see, if the court said, well, Mr. Talon, you're there seven days a week. We'd rather you were only there four. Well, then we can talk. That's workable. And I don't go to jail. And we would prefer you did it this hours of the day. Right, grand. Will you let me on the bus so I can go somewhere else as well? So, is it possible that spirits are operating in the world through people and people are oblivious to that? Isn't that what's meant by deceiving the nations? Wouldn't that be a, a component of it? My people perish for the lack of knowledge. So it's this type of teaching and edification that actually builds the church because people wake up and say, oh, is this really going on? Is this an actual spiritual warfare? Is the enemy trying to pull a fast one here? 
Is the devil trying to actually get in there somewhere? Did Jezebel help him to get there? Has she been recruiting beautiful, intelligent people and using them to get into positions where they can change these sections and influence legislating, legislative bodies? Because that's the way the enemy works. The enemy works through people, through spirits inside of people. Uh, what I'm saying is absolutely the truth. This is what he does. So, being that he does that, and has done it historically, and has wormed his way into society, and wormed his way into the Constitution, because he's serpentine. And if you look at the sayings of old, because we have to look to our elders, they're not like some kind of archaic, redundant, past their sell-by date, simpletons that we don't listen to they are human beings with a life of experience and what the way society is set up is to just kind of nah they're old because they're slow and sometimes hunched over and people kind of there's a kind of a thing where people just walk around them nowadays and they're real quiet and kind of subdued and in on themselves. The people used to take care of them and they were warm with them. Now I just look around, people are just kind of going around them. Oh, oh social distance. Oh, she's old quick because, you know, the old people are the vulnerable ones. And I go back to your house there and stick your mask on. I don't accept it. And I will speak out about it. But when you look to them and look to the way they used to speak, they'd say things like, oh, the devil's in the detail. Well, what do you mean? What, do you, what does that mean, the devil's in the detail? First of all, they've acknowledged the devil. Secondly, they've acknowledged that he's in something. And it is specifically the detail. Okay, well, if the devil's in the detail, and something is detailed, then you can identify him in the detail. So how does he hide? Vagueness. If something is vague, then he can more easily hide. And he's got more room to manoeuvre. Because you can't pin him down in the detail. You see that? You can't pin him down. So there he is, look there, that makes no sense. That's clearly unreasonable right there. But if he keeps it vague and most people are ignorant to what's actually happening in, in the spiritual aspect and he has miseducated them on the spirits of annoyance and spirit of, spirits of offence and encouraged them in um, operating in those spirits and try to make them feel uh, justified and vindicated in operating in those spirits and feeling though they have a purpose and they're doing the right thing and they're leaders in those spirits. Yeah, you have it right. That's it, yeah. You're right to feel annoyed about this. You're right to feel offended about this. You're right to feel threatened about this. This isn't insulting. This is obscene. This is whatever. The thing is that gives room to the spirit. So he keeps the vagueness there so that he can move about. So what's vague? Insulting is very vague. So is cause for serious offence. Because serious, when you put the word serious in there, whoa, that really amps it up a bit. But if you just said offence, it would still, wouldn't it, shouldn't it mean the same thing? Unless offence is actually something that is a measurable harm, then there would be like a spectrum. So you'd say, You've got a grade one injury to your muscle or a grade two or a grade three. That depends on the severity of the tear in the muscle. So when you say offence, you would think that serious offence is greater than an offence. Incrementally greater, that, that it's a larger offence. 
but then you'd have to state exactly what an offence what offence means and then in order for that to avoid being vague it would have to have an exact definition in law but you see nowadays there's a presumption of ignorance instead of a presumption of innocence and so because they're presuming that you're ignorant of these things they're just going to throw them in there and hope that what was what you, what they told you on the social media platforms stuck and so that when you actually read it you go yeah that, that appears reasonable remember what the bible said appearing reasonable but when you actually unpack it when you actually look at it you say hold on that's actually when you look at how that works and what results of it no a guy that did no harm to somebody is doing eight months where like you see what i'm saying has been sentenced eight months so what's the <laughs> being sentenced eight months and doing eight months two different things yeah so if if there's a difference between um, offence and serious offence well first we have to establish what is offence that's not done there's no lawful there's no lawful definition of offence but why is it even in the wording? What's it doing in the wording? It's not a thing in law. Unless you've committed an offence. Oh, that's different. But you see, the word offence is kind of there on the tip of the tongue and you kind of associate it with law. So you think offence, offence. Yeah, offence in the garden keeps the dog in sounds the same offence but what does it mean offence to offend is to break the law when taught when speaking about the law but to offend like you offended my worldview meaning that you said something that doesn't agree with my worldview well that's fine that's actually not breaking the law So what's serious offence then? You seriously said something that is against my worldview. Like in all seriousness. So that's incrementally more vague. So it's not only unclear what offence is, it's very unclear. It's seriously unclear. So they're hoping that the word serious officiates the vagueness of the word offence. There's no lawful definition for offence. So why does it matter whether it's serious or not? A serious annoyance. Well, we know what annoyance is, but it's not against the law to annoy somebody. Because somebody being annoyed is their decision. Somebody say, you know, somebody can do something. You say, that please don't do that. Right? But if a person is given to annoyance, their reaction would be disproportionate. So you'd say, Mary, stop doing that or you're going to your room for an hour. Right? So there'd be a, a punishment for something, but the something would have had to been clearly outlined at the outset. If you do that, you're, not, you're breaking the rules of the house. then Mary would know so you could hold her accountable. Right, Mary, I told you that you'd be breaking the rules of the house if you did this. Therefore, you have to go to your room for an hour. 
But if you didn't say, if, if what Mary was doing was normally perfectly fine, but you said, right, Mary, I'm annoyed with you today. Right? And you're operating in that spirit. And because you're animated and it looks like your peace is disrupted, and you're directing your annoyance at somebody, doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, the, now the object of your annoyance, which is actually yourself, but the person you're pointing to, I mean, who may be perfectly peaceful, is the person that the law is pointing to as having done something wrong when you're the one shouting and pointing the finger. So you're actually the one breaking, breaching the peace. So you're the one who's contracting with the spirit of annoyance. You're the one giving remit, giving access to that spirit to the situation. And that's what this, this, that's what this legislation does. This legislation allows that. You see? Serious annoyance. Serious offence. You see the, see the way you're trying to make something out of nothing? Because there's no lawful definition in it. So it has to point to itself. I'm serious offence, take me serious. That's the spirit talking about itself, you see? I'm serious offence, I'm serious annoyance. Take me serious, include me, bring me into the thing, it's serious. You see that? But it has, to, it, but there's no definition. It's not lawful because it's spiritual. So it can't be lawful. You can't lawfully depict a spirit. A spirit is non-physical. So you can't define it as, an, as a, being an actual offence, the, the, the lawful use of the word. Okay? Or might reasonably be expected to be aware of such behaviour. Serious offence, serious annoyance to any person who is or might reasonably be expected to be aware of such behaviour. Of what behaviour? Because you haven't actually articulated what the, the behaviour that's breaking the law is. But you're, but you're talking about serious offence and serious annoyance. But what's the behaviour so that people can not do the behaviour? How can you avoid doing a behaviour that you don't know you shouldn't do? Or that it's not unlawful to do? Do you see the point I'm making to you? It shall be an offence for any person in a public place to distribute or display. So this deals with the spoken or the, the behaviour in section 6 and section 7 deals with material, written material, etc. It shall be an offence for any person in a public place to distribute or display any writing, sign or visible representation which is threatening. So threatening is a word that is very clear. Threatening is when you actually threaten the physical safety of a person. Now that can be a verbal threat which would be the actual definition of hate speech. When somebody says, I will hurt you if you do, 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 or I will hurt you because da, 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 then that is the actual real definition of hate speech as it pertains to law, as we know it. But when it says here in section seven, it shall be an offense for any person in a public place. Okay, well, public place is normally where you distribute stuff or display any writing. Okay, so you display writing in a public place if you're trying to convey a message, that's fine. People have shop fronts and stuff. So that's that in and of itself. So far, there's no offense. Sign or visible representation, no offense, which is threatening. Here we're, de here we're, here we're describing the, 
the offence threatening to threaten somebody is an offence see a different application of the word there's an offence and there's offence something that's deemed offensive by somebody but that's subjective so it's not measurable so can it be clearly defined so it shouldn't be in law because you can't police it without the guard operating conspiratori conspiratorially with the other person who subjectively happens to agree with them in order to effect an, an arrest who just so happens to agree with them what a coincidence so threatening abusive well what's abusive so abusive is actually abuse which means the wrong use abuse what does that mean like abnormal abuse use to bad effect or for a bad purpose to misuse something treat with cruelty or violence especially regularly or repeatedly the improper use of something cruel and violent treatment so here like violent threatening is the threat of violent and abuse is actually violent so so far we can understand insulting well here we're going into obscurity insulting disrespectful or scornfully abusive well hold on a second disrespectful or scornfully abusive there's a kind of a muddying of the waters because scorn is spoken a feeling of an expression of contempt or disdain for something or someone it's an expression that's the spoken word to feel or express something by the spoken word that's scorn so something scornfully abusive is like doesn't really pertain to public order because abusive is violent so how can something be uh, verbally violent do you see what i'm saying to you do you see the muddying of the waters here because they have to try to make something appear as if it's breaking the law but when you unpack it it's a nonsense now you could say something is abusive if you're describing the function of something as being one thing but you actually know it to be another like if you were saying a nose is for speaking through well that would clearly be abusive quite literally because that would be the wrong use of a nose so that would be abusive speak and here we move to obscene so it says threatening abusive insulting or obscene so let's look at the word obscene do you see how we're being mocked in these wordings obscene so obscene would be offensive or disgusting by accepted standards of morality and decency well we know the bible is an accepted standard of morality and decency in ireland still to this day the bible is an accepted accepted standard of morality and decency so obscene material would be something like um pornography like if you were handing out something on the street say you were handing out pornographic material to a little one on the street there flyer that would be obscene and the guard would rightly arrest you and say ask you what you were taught you were doing take you down the station 
and ask you, what are you doing, man or woman, giving that out to that child? And then they might even consider that that person needs a talking to by somebody helpful in the community and might need more attention because there's something clearly malfunctioning there. So pornographic, indecent, salacious, smutty, lewd, rude, dirty generally pertains to sexually uh, explicit material. So, offending against moral principles or repugnant, outrageous, heinous, foul, vile, scandalous, shocking. So, as it pertains to my sign, it was said that people felt, the guard felt there was, uh, it might have caused somebody to be insulted and that that might have caused a breach of the peace if somebody had seen it so because he thought subjectively that my sign might be insulting to somebody who might see it they thought it would be a good idea to take my sign and arrest me but the material on the sign contained biblical scriptures and biblical teachings. Like, for example, sin serves Satan was some of the wording. Would you say that's right? So, by extension, any type of sin, therefore, serves Satan, doesn't it? Is that correct? That's correct. So, is that a perfectly biblical construct and teaching? Yes, it is. So, how then can the accepted standard of morality and decency be deemed insulting? and a cause for annoyance and offence. How? Unless the person who's deeming it offensive is not operating on good morals, on good moral ground, and is given to a spirit of offence and annoyance, See what's happened? The enemy has found his way into the public, into the law through the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. What has he done? He's used the darkness to propagate the darkness. What do I mean by that? What did they call alcohol? Only spirits. So he brought it in through the Intoxicating Liquor Act. To propagate his spirits. He operates from the darkness to propagate the darkness. Drunkenness is darkness. Why do you think the Bible says, be ye sober minded? Be ye vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Where does the word alcohol come from? Al cool. It's demonic. It's a demonic practice. It's a body eating spirit, a body devouring spirit, al cool. I was an alcoholic for years. I know personal experience. It breaks down your body and you suffer as a result. And you're given then, you're more likely to uptake other spirits as a result of drinking spirits. You're literally drinking spirits. What do people do? They get violent. That's an evil spirit. What do they do when they drink? They're promiscuous. 
That's adultery. That's an evil spirit. What else are they given to? Getting annoyed, taking offence. So the thing that the public order is supposed to defend against, it's actually propagating. So now instead of the guardian of the peace being put up to keeping the peace, he's been put up to encouraging access to these evil spirits in law. That's what he's been put up. Go on ahead there, guard. A guardian of the annoyance. A guardian of the offence. A guardian of the... A guardian of the... A guardian of the vagueness. A guardian of the subjectivity. So are we going to allow that to continue? Or are we going to say, we want our laws to be manageable and sensible and reasonable and clearly defined because I'm not afraid and you shouldn't be either why? because fear is another evil spirit Amen? Section six, it shall be an offence. Do you see that? That's the proper word, use of the word. Misapplied, albeit. It shall be an offence for any person in a public place to use or engage in any threatening, abusive or insulting. Oh, slip that in there. Because threatening, abusive, that's reasonable. Insulting, lost it. You were on the tracks and it was like threatening, abusive. <laughs> Insulting, too subjective, too vague. You've let the enemy in the door. Words or behaviour with intent to provoke a breach of the peace or being reckless as to whether a breach of the peace may be occasioned. It's like, you should have known that that person would be insulted by that. Now get to jail. Just totally unreasonable. You should have known. That somebody would choose to have a different worldview to you and as a result behave irrationally. Section 7. It shall be an offence for any person in a public place to distribute or display any writing, sign or visible representation which is, so it covers the, the, the signs as well and the flyers. In section 7 there. How did that get in under the Intoxicating Liquor Act? That's not a natural corollary. What's it doing in there? And notice it's, they're at the end, they're towards the bottom. So they were, they came in later. It's an augmentation of something that initially came in. Yeah, that's reasonable enough. Yep, do 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 seven and eight. And six, six and seven and eight. Right? But just moving seven doesn't remove six. You need to remove six and seven because they're the same thing. Just in a different format. Surely if you remove seven, you've got to remove six. And then you've got to clearly outline what offensive conduct means. Surely. Where is it? Whew, offensive conduct? So what's offensive at law? For your conduct or language to be offensive at law, it must be calculated to wound the feelings, arouse anger or resentment or disgust or outrage or in, in, in the mind of a reasonable person. Oh, there, there's a, many assumptions. Right? First, how is a judge able to calculate 
that the person who he deems has a reasonable mind has a reasonable mind How does he do that? So this is all part of the same insidious agenda to inject vagueness, um, subjectivity and unsureness, unmanageability because in all of those things the enemy has maneuverability because he has to operate in the darkness. So he's got to get the darkness, which is nonsense, into the law in order to have some kind of maneuverability within the law. Do you see how that works? The darkness begins with the darkness and in order to expand range has to propagate the darkness. What is nonsense but darkness? You see, this is what people don't realise because they think the word holy is some kind of thing that you utter with a specific accent while you're looking down your nose. But holy just means complete. It just means needing nothing. It just means perfect. Holy, H-O-L-Y. Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Same meaning. Holy, perfect, complete, fulfilled, needing nothing. That's what holy means. Do you see? So. Anything that's not perfect, complete, full, easily understood, reasonable, is not. Doesn't have any place in the, in the Irish constitution or anywhere near it because the constitution is supposed to be based on reasonability reasonableness it's supposed to be something that's easily understood and that's why they're relying on their legislations and their amendments and all to support each other and, and build these exoskeletons that are parasitic to remove and nullify rights that are in the constitution and they need these things to kind of hold each other up because they're very kind of shaky structures Ooh, kind of blown in the wind there so they need lads in there to kind of keep this thing move keep a, keep a, keep giving life to this and what's meant by that giving life to it well their life their very life they're given to it because they're putting these things into legislation, into uh, print. That's, you can only say into print because they're not in law. Because anything that no, tries to contradict the law can't be therefore lawful. So they just try to sustain it and maintain it. They're breaking the law. They're breaking the law. Look. That's why we challenge these things in the High Court. Because we say, High Court, look. Look what they're doing. And so the High Court gets an opportunity to either um, abide by the law or break the law. Because the law is clear. So they set themselves up for it. And they get a day in court to decide what they're going to do and how they're going to proceed and Lord Jesus is sovereign and so I hope the High Court do what's right I, I, I have to question why section 113 hasn't been put in for a challenge and why anybody would challenge section 7 and not section 6 And the tail end of section five. Ah, sure, it's a mess. Because you'd say, reasonably, you'd say, you can't pinch that man's wife's bum because you've had five points of Guinness. You can't do that. You might say, that's offensive conduct. 
that's indecent behaviour. That's physical assault is what it is. In some countries it would be called battery. You cannot touch a person without their consent. You can't. Right? So, unless of course you're, it's your little girl or your little boy and you're picking them up because they're going for their dinner. That's different. What I mean is, you can't just randomly go up to some man's wife. Right? When he's out getting a slice of pizza and you, you're full, you're tanked up on beer so you forgot you're not in the nightclub anymore acting the maggot. And you go over and you see a girl and you pinch her and it's a man's wife. Well then he has to, like he doesn't want to get fisty cuffs with the man so he, he can call the guard. Guard! This fella's doing. Will you create a bit of distance between us here and wait for me slice? That appears reasonable. But then when you start slight and look it even goes to say uh, between the hours of 12 and 7 a.m. During drinking hours, nightclub hours, it even goes right up to 7 a.m. For the lad who's been at it all night and he's sloppy. He might have fallen into your garden or something. Now who's the guy sleeping in my garden? Guard. To bring the kids to school in a few minutes. Do you know what I mean? So, you go to section 6 then, section 7, section 8, and it's la-la land. Insulting this and insulting that. Well, you can be insulted by anything if that's what you're given to. If you're given to the spirit of offence, you could be insulted by the petal of an orchid. That's, that's offensive to me. I'm offended by this or that or the other thing. If you're a slave to that spirit. And if you're gung-ho, and if you've been influenced and inculcated and indoctrinated into a way of being and a way of seeing things, and you've been encouraged to have that mob mentality and to think you're saving the world by having it, be the change you want to see in the world and all that stuff, and that anybody who stands in your way is, your, is automatically your enemy, well, then you're given to a spirit of offence. You're given to that a, a spirit of annoyance. You're given to that spirit of combativeness, that violent spirit. And so this stuff might even appear reasonable to you. But it's not reasonable. It's not even clearly defined. It's opposed to the law. So how can it be lawful? It can't be. Um, uh, something that is opposed to your fundamental rights can't be lawful. That's basic. I mean, you wouldn't pass your exams as a law lawyer if you didn't know that. Section 9. Any person who, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse... You know, as a preacher, as an Irish citizen on the street preaching, you have lawful authority to do so. Lawful authority means that the law affords you that right. Do you see that? So as a citizen, you have a lawful authority to engage in constitutionally protected activities. I have a lawful authority to engage services without having unreasonable or unfair conditions of service imposed upon me. Or been forced to wear items that haven't been proven to be of merchantable quality and least do no harm. At least do no harm. This is serious stuff. And they want to find you 2,000 and throw you in the, in the prison, like. Remove your liberty. Any person who, without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, willfully prevents or interrupts the free passage of any person or vehicle in any po and finish up with a reasonable one lads round it off that's totally reasonable section 9 any person without lawful authority or reasonable excuse 
willfully prevents or interrupts the free passage of any person or vehicle in any public place shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding £200. This was a while ago, if it was pounds. Do you know that I'm the first person that has ever been convicted under Section 7? The first. Ever. Listen. So you would think that somebody's... Now, I could understand the ladies who own the uh, lovely shops with the dresses in them. Encourage women to wear dresses. I would understand if I was standing in front of the door saying you can't get in there that you would get fined like that the guard he'd say what are you doing will you let them into the shop there what are you at no no I'm not letting anybody into the shop today they'd say oh, come on look, grab him you cannot be standing in the front of the shop there what are you at is everything all right with you? What's going on? What happened? What's happening in your life? There used to be an approach with people. It's gone cold now. It's gone calloused. You know, did you lose somebody recently? Has somebody died on you? What's going on with you? Have you got medication? Why, why are you this way? What's going on with you? Any person who without lawful authority or reasonable excuse are you compass mentis? Are you drunk? Willfully prevents or interrupts the free passage of any person or vehicle in any public place shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding £200. Not exceeding £200. Right, that's it. Two grand and six months in prison. You didn't put on your face diaper. You wouldn't ask anybody to put a hanky on their face for two hours. <coughs> and now it's stuck to your face. Schnotts all over your face for two hours to get the double. Ah no, come on, when you sneeze on it, you take it off, you wipe it, you... Where do you put it? Put a new mask on, yeah, but where do you put the old one? What's the point of it then? You've got this all over your hands now, you touch your face. You've... Nonsense. And then Fauci's findings are telling you, put on a second one over that as well. Just in case you can breathe. We've got to stand on the law and we've got to uphold the law and any time there is a section that contravenes the law we need to challenge it and remove it otherwise your children inherit a madhouse full of spiritual propagation evil spirits and the place becomes a place of uh, demonic activity and it becomes more unrest there becomes more civil unrest and chaos popping up here and cropping up there this man was beaten up that person was that person was this that person was that and then the guards are showing up saying well you said this to that person well I didn't like they rugby tackled me all I'm doing is saying preaching the gospel all I'm doing is saying this, I'm giving my opinions, my worldviews, I'm sharing. I'm not attacking anybody. But when you start to say, yes, we are standing in favour of the one who's contracting with annoyance and offence, then you're no longer guarding the peace. Because when you're guarding the peace, you say, no, you're not no your offense and your your annoyance are one thing but this man's rights can't be removed by your subjectivities and your annoyances and your offenses 
and no you can't sorry you can't physically touch him you can't hurt him you can't hit him that's not okay just because you disagree with him you can't do that you can't try and kick his bible out of his hand you can't do that that's his worldview just like you, you, I mean you can't go over and tip over the guy the Islamic guy's table because you don't agree with his and all his flyers go everywhere you can't do that that's not a set acceptable and so that's why the Islamic guy can have his flyers over there and I can preach over here and there's no conflict but when people start to say I'm annoyed by you I'm offended by you and then the guards come along and they're even preempting that somebody might be insulted even in the absence of anybody being there then we've got serious issues that need attention and all I can do as a fellow citizen fellow Irish man is bring them to your attention I'm not a violent person I'm not engaging in seditious activity I'm going through the proper channels if I'm properly summoned to court I will show up no problem if there's a, a reasonable um, suspicion if they've actually articulated that a crime has been committed if they actually go about investigating a crime having been committed or establish any footing upon which to summons me to court then that would be a different situation but not even having the level of commitment to sign the summons or even uh, put it in an envelope goes to show how far things the standards are dropping and the accountability is dropping because there's one thing buying a lovely new, driving a lovely new jeep there's another thing fulfilling your office another one thing having a lovely big state-of-the-art station it's another thing actually fulfilling your office professionally and according to the law so having the trappings of success they can literally become trappings because they become your focus instead of your job so it's not how well uniformed a person is uh, how fancy their whip is how state of the art the station is it's are they keeping the law are they actually guarding the peace are they upholding the rights of the citizens and holding everybody equally before the law not favoring uh, favoring Anne over John not acting out of jurisdiction not removing the presumption of innocence not acting with partiality not doing those things actually upholding the powers instituted in the land properly and in accordance with the Constitution that is how we know that our our guard are actually doing a right job because the station and the car and grand that's lovely that's one aspect of it and the facilities are needed but the carrying out of the job properly has to be the priority has to be dressing right and smart paying the lads properly be good as well gainful employment that would lead to um, probably less opportunity for crime the, the uh, the draw and the temptation to turn a blind eye would be reduced if the wages were right and, and actually covered a lad fairly so that he wasn't doing overtime and every opportunity just to make ends meet 
These things need to be looked at. Our government needs to be looking at these things. So there's... As the average Joe, yes, you're an average Joe, but you do have a responsibility to your fellow man. You do have to care about people. And it's we the people for the people. It's not we the people for ourselves. And, you know, trample everybody else and throw them under the bus at every opportunity. And suit yourself. It's we the people for the people. So that's looking after your neighbour. And your neighbour includes your garda. You've got to love him and look out for his interests. And at the same time, not tolerate when lads go crooked. Or when legislative bodies ask lads to do things that are against the law and against their oath and against their office and, and whatever else. So that's part of we the people for the people. That's ensuring that corruption stays out of the law, corruption stays out of the station, etc, etc. And that's why it was written into the constitution that the guards can't partake of societies that would may have agendas that were not in keeping with that of the constitution. Because then they would have um, the, 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 if that wasn't written into the constitution they would have the, they would potentially um, create an opportunity for guards to, to have a an, an ulterior motive an ulterior agenda and these are realities if, if you don't think that this is reality in life then you're naive and you need to read your bible because it's the true word of god and it's been handed down generation upon generation um, so that you could read it. And if you want to be educated and you want to be uh, to seek wisdom, seek it in the pages of the Bible. And then other things will become clear. And you'll be trained in the ways of the Lord. And you'll start to see the world uh, differently and navigate through it circumspectly and the Lord will train you up as his soldier if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you'll learn to love even those who set themselves up as your enemy and you'll learn not to be fearful and you'll see all, all throughout the Bible that men of God were thrown in prison <laughs> they were thrown in prison they were persecuted, killed why? because they wouldn't acquiesce. They they kept their station and finished their race. They knew they were lambs for the slaughter and they didn't shy away from it. And we do know that. We do know the world hates us. And maybe once it's gone, because we talk out about things and expose the unfruitful works of darkness and point to the evil deeds. And that's why they hated Jesus, because he testified that the, the deeds of the world were evil. The deeds of the world were evil. That's why the world hates Jesus. He's creator. He's perfect. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's all powerful. He gave you life. In your soul, in your spirit. He promises you abundant life. If you will put faith in him, and trust in him instead of your own flesh and your own things and stuff and loving life more than you love him like I'm in your life in this world like what, why would you love life in this world more than you love the one who gave you the life that would be death right because if you don't love you hate there's no middle ground what I've learned is there's no such thing as loving a little bit. And love doesn't quit. Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father but through me, saith the Lord. I love you. Blessings. <laughs>